Hello once again, everyone. This is the KMN 1971 back with the last comic book haul of 2016. Starting off, obviously, on a little bit of a somber note, but rest in peace, Carrie Fisher. Uh, as I've said numerous times in multiple comic book hauls, I am a huge Star Wars fan, and it was a bit inescapable not to have a, a crush on Carrie Fisher growing up being a guy from my generation. Uh, it is cliche to say that someone captured the, the, the hearts and imagination of uh, another person, but cliches are cliches because they're true, and they hold true with this person. So there, there haven't been many celebrity deaths that really hit home as far as I, uh, as, as far as I, uh, as, uh, as far as I'm concerned, having a hard time talking as usual, ending the year consistently, right? And, um, but Carrie Fisher was one of those people, Kurt Cobain, Carrie Fisher, George Carlin, and Robin Williams, all, uh, incredibly entertaining people that did both, uh, of those things, um, captured my imagination and my heart. So, rest in peace. So, considering this is the last haul of, of the year, I'm going to do a little something, actually, I'm going to do something a little differently. I don't usually show modern books, but I figured at the end of every year I will show what my pull list is. Uh, I'm always showing off back issues, uh, showing off what I dig of what has come before, but I never really show off what I am digging in the present. So here is um, something that I just started reading, Scott Snyder and Jeff Lemire's AD, After Death. Really good read. Very indie art style. But um, along with that and this, Reborn, issue number three, an another series that I am enjoying incredibly, and Seven to Eternity, number four. I haven't read this one yet either, but with these three books, it has really kind of um, revitalized my, my love for Image Comics. They're kind of um, the house of ideas right now, as far as I'm concerned. Okay. Batman. Uh, I have been consistently enjoying Batman ever since Grant Morrison. Uh, well, pretty much, actually. I've been consistently enjoying the Batman title since the Hush storyline back in the early 2000s, which is a very good run considering the state of the market uh, and, and the state of the industry. Detective Comics. All-Star Batman. And I am also reading... Hold on. Uh, there we are. Dark Knight 3. Um, I have been reading Batman for a very long time, and I have to say, uh, across the bat line, the main Batman titles themselves have been incredible. I, I can't remember the last time that the quality has been this high on the Batman titles across the board. I'm also currently enjoying Justice League versus the Suicide Squad. Titans, which... Um, I've been very lukewarm about, but the last page of this story arc, which I'm glad is over, I could not stand abracadabra, but uh, the last page of the story arc just makes you want to read it more. So it, it, it's, a, it's still on my pull list for at least a, another story arc. Hal Jordan and the Green Lantern Corps. Um, one of the surprise uh, breakout series for me, I, I just tried it to try to reconnect with the, the Green Lantern franchises with a uh, rebirth, and this one really stuck with me. This is an outstanding title. Suicide Squad, which has been pretty good. It still hasn't hit its stride yet. Deathstroke, another title that really surprised me in a positive matter, manner. Deadpool, number 23, one of my uh, few, very few Marvel pulls on my pull list, unfortunately. Spider-Man and Deadpool, which I think will, uh, I don't know, it just has not been impressing me as of lately. I, I think I might be dropping this title in, and replacing it with Doctor Strange. And lastly, Star Wars number 26. So, just for fun and giggles, 
that is my monthly pull list. Now, on to the back issue haul. Starting off, Star Wars number 78. This last, uh, this next group of books will are, um, they represent the last of that dollar binge haul. So this is it, the last of them. Uh, number, Star Wars number 78. Number 79. Number 80. Eighty-five with a very goofy-looking Han Solo-looking uh, illustration on the cover. Uh, I don't know what was up with that. G.I. Joe and the Transformers. Don't know anything about it, but I just figured with the recent uh, modern crossover that's going on, that I thought that was pretty cool picking that up. Um, as you know, big fan of cross-company crossovers. Predator versus Magnus, robot fighter. Number one. And number two, and this next group of books, I was psyched to pick up for a buck each. Uh, no big deal about them, but these are books that I used to own when I was in high school, traded them away, and I, I always kind of wanted them back, but um, I, I didn't really seek them out. But when I saw them for a dollar each, I was like, am I missing something? So Wolverine number seven from his first series. Number six, number five, number four, number three, and number two. There was no number one in there. I was getting getting excited. I already have an issue of uh, a copy of number one, but. For a dollar, there would be no way I would have left that behind. All right. I am still on my Doctor Strange kick. Uh, this has been... Uh, Reaper Tate just ended up putting a video out of uh, showcasing this series, and I could not agree with him more. Uh, I've always kind of liked Doctor Strange, but this series has surprised me with how much I, I have... Um, that I've been enjoying it. So, Doctor Strange number six, number seven, and number eight, all from the current series. Now, some Bronze Age goodness. Doctor Strange number 20. Ghost Rider, number 26. I've always liked the Spider-Man cover. Dave Cockrum and Terry Austin. Um, Amazing Spider-Man, number 188. Conan the Barbarian, number 37. Um, uh, something to note about this issue for Neil Adams, Neil Adams fans. Uh, this is a pretty affordable issue, obviously. It's a Conan and the Barbarian issue. and um, But it ha it contains a cover and uh, complete interiors done by Neil Adams. So I thought that was pretty cool and worth noting. I just picked this one up yesterday. Ragman, number one. Unfortunately, there was some staining on the back cover, but it was only about two bucks. Same thing with this one. I thought it was in better condition, but there is a little bit of staining up here. And seeing that it's one of these thick dollar size, oversized books, the spine kind of bust open here and down here. But it's still probably, I'd say, uh, at least a VG plus. And I thought it was cool. This is one of those books that I used to see in the house ads back in back in the day and um, when I first started reading. So anytime I usually run across one of these uh, comics that I forgot about, but it used to be running the old old school house ads, I usually pick it up if it's at the right price, and this was. So, uh, Superman, 80 page giant. Here's a, it was a really good read. Green Lantern, Superman, Legend of the Green Flame, Frank Miller cover. It's written by Neil Gaiman, and I guess it was a spark, uh, storyline that was supposed to originally take place in action comics, but continuity ended up getting in the way, but eventually they ended up, uh, it, it ended up seeing print, which is a very good thing.
DC Comics Presents number 85. Not an expensive issue whatsoever, but if you're an Alan Moore Swamp Thing completist, you would want to pick up this issue because it is written by Alan Moore. And anytime, quite frankly, that Swamp Thing and uh, Superman interact, it's kind of a cool deal. Uncanny, the Uncanny X-Men, number 153. Now that I have um, basically a, a run from 95 to 151, I'm trying to fill out that, uh, basically the 150s. And uh, one, once I do that, there's probably like four or five issues I need within 150 to 160. And once I do that, I'll have a complete run from Uncanny X-Men, number 95 to like 176, 177. So, that's pretty cool. Uncanny X-Men number 154. All right. Batman and the Outsiders number one from the 2007 series. This is a variant. Um, it's not in demand by any means whatsoever. I think you can get this on eBay for like between five and ten bucks tops shipped but I have a I have a thing for a Batman variants for our first issue so I, I figured why not and plus with a tough white cover like that you never know what happens over the course of time I ended up picking this up at that LCS that it was having a 30% sale off this week so I figured why not and these are pretty high grade Batman number 394 395 and 398 I also picked up Detective Comics number 526 anniversary issue as well as Detective Comics number 500 which are kind of tough to get in higher grades just because they're square bound, oversized issues. Um, number 526 is in better shape. This one's in pretty sweet shape too, but it does have a slight crease up there. So I'd say for probably a fine minus. And it was very cool to pick these up also. Still working on my Deadpool Volume 1 run, and this is the best of both worlds for me, Deadpool and The Punisher. So, uh, Deadpool number 55 from his first series, and number 54, also. Uh, really happy to pick those up. Those were also uh, part of the half-price deals, so that was pretty cool. Alright, so, uh, actually, let's... Get on to my top 10 picks of 2016. Coming in at number 10 would be Sandman, number one. Really happy to add this issue to my collection this year. Um, I've been watching everybody's uh, top picks of 2016, and wow, some of you guys, just amazing, amazing videos. Some of you have just had incredible years, so... Um, this is not going to compare to anything that I've seen out there, but um, I'm pretty happy with what I was able to uh, scrounge up for myself this year. So, Sandman number one, Outstanding Read, uh, first appearance of Morpheus. Number nine would be Marvel Spotlight. Number two, first appearance of Jack Russell, the werewolf by night. At number eight, I have Daredevil, number 131, the first appearance of Bullseye. What number am I at already? All right. Thor, number 165. Is... X-Men. Number 101, I ended up picking up um, the year, well, in 2015, I ended up finishing off the John Byrne, Chris Claremont run, which was a, a very big deal for me. So then I started working my way back, backwards, and I wanted to get the uh, the whole Dave Cockrum, Len Wein, 
uh, Chris Claremont run on the X-Men. So uh, I ended up picking up issues uh, 95 to 106 over the course of this year, but this would be my favorite uh, I- issue out of that, that run would be uh, X-Men, number 101, the first appearance of the Phoenix, a huge part of um, the X-Men mythos over the, over the years. So very happy to add that. Now down to the top five. I lost count there for a little while. I was trying to cover for it, but got to come clean with you guys. Number five, a random act of awesomeness from my younger brother who just randomly gave me this book this year. Incredible. Uh, I used to be a huge Spawn fan. I haven't bought bought an issue of Spawn in years, but um, huge Todd McFarlane fan. So just to have this rare variant, I, I have a, a regular issue of number one like most of us out there, but to end up picking this up for, for free. Just and to have it as a gift from my brother, sentimental value. So at the very least, I had to put it into my um, my top five. At number four, I have Justice League of America, number twenty one. This is the first crossover between um, JLA and the JSA. It's the first crisis on Earth one. So crisis would be in a, a, a reoccurring theme throughout the DC universe throughout the years. And uh, I'm a huge fan of comic book history, as I've said before about this issue, and this huge fan of the JLA, huge fan of the JSA. So th- this was a book that I didn't think I'd own this year. Um, I originally stated that I paid $50 for this issue, and, and, which is true out of pocket. But when I ended up looking it up later, because I was um, just curious, just reviewing over my purchases over the year, but it was actually around $70, but I ended up using 20 for eBay bucks. But I wanted to just correct that. At number three, I have The Amazing Spider-Man, number 300, first appearance of Venom. Welcome back to my collection after years. Uh, I sold this book off way back in the 80s and have regretted it for a long time. So I'm very, very, very happy to bring this one back home. Marvel Spotlight, number five. Um, Just uh, part of my holy trinity of... uh, Marvel's badasses from the Bronze Age, Wolverine, the Punisher, and Ghost Rider. The Ghost Rider was um, the last character I needed to complete that trilogy, and uh, or rather Trinity. <laughs> and uh, I, I still, uh, I'm, I'm just very pleased to, to own this book. Probably only a, a 6.0, 6.5, but still very, very happy to bring this one in. And the last issue, uh, my number one most coveted pick, I guess, uh, of the of the year would be Brave and Bold, number 54. This one is probably only a 5.5, as was the, the JLA issue. But for Silver Age Low, I don't really mind that, and I just love this book right here. This is a grail to me. I'm a huge fan of the ti- uh, Teen Titans franchise, mainly because of the George Perez, Marv Wolfman era, but... Um, just to actually have that first Silver Age appearance is a pretty big deal to me. Um, so let's put that to the side for a sec. And I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you to multiple YouTubers that have been either supportive or have entertained me over the years and getting me uh, inadvertently to uh, start my own YouTube channel. So thank you for the influence. Thank you for the entertainment. Thank you for the support. So uh, just uh, a quick roll call of awesomeness. Weapon X Comics, The Doom 143, Comic Quarter 410, Mercenar, um, Omega Shinraiuken, Vin Crew 12,000, Dead Clone, Unslabbed 88, Palupasaurus, Goomba 213, Freddy's 562, Hollow Mouse, Batsman Fans, uh, Longshank 78, Yanni Gugelop, Jim Autolicus, Bat Avenger, and last but not least, the guy that I first, the first YouTuber I ever started watching comic book hauls about four years ago when the light bulb went off above my head and I just put in comic book collection or comic book haul, um, Big Baby Sid, just a dude that loves comics and started me down the rabbit hole. So to all of you, thank you all. Happy New Year. Um, I just wanted to go over the year in general. Uh, the industry has become fueled by the cinema, basically, all the movie releases. And I just wanted to, just for fun, sh- show off what uh, that, what I kind of dug this year. 
So, my least favorite. Now, out of all these movies, this is not rant against any of them. I, I, I went to go see all of them. And um, so, the least favorite out of the, the bunch would be the X-Men Apocalypse. Unfortunately. But it was still okay. Suicide Squad. Another movie that I was expecting a bit more out of, but um, if you were a bit disappointed about it, I say give the extended cut a chance. It, it was a more enjoyable experience. Deadpool. Pure awesome. Fun. Um, what you go to the movies to go to see. Um, I can't list it here because I don't have it on me, obviously, but uh, Doctor Strange is another movie that I would have listed right under Deadpool. I just enjoyed the living hell out of that movie. Also, Daredevil Season 2. Incredible stuff. Uh, I have yet to... I'm going to end up binge-watching Cage. I started with the first episode, but I ended up getting sidetracked with Westworld. So I'm going to jump back on that in January. So my last two, my favorite two uh, cinematic viewing pleasures, I guess, of 2016 would go to... Captain America Civil War, just seeing Spider-Man and all those characters on the same screen for the first time together. Outstanding. And I know this is a polarizing pick, but I really did enjoy Batman vs. Superman, Dawn of Justice, especially the um, Ultimate Edition. Such a better narrative, uh, a more cohesive narrative. Yeah, there are still those cheesy parts that you can't get around, like the Martha and I I want Do You Bleed? But uh, other than that, it was really enjoyable. And for what, you know, there is seems to be a camp that demonizes one and not the other. For that camp, I would say um, go check out Screen Junkies. Whoops, technical difficulties. Check out Screen Junkies. They have a great video doing a compare and contrast of the two. And I find it very enjoyable. So that's about it. That's all I have for this year. I will be back next year for another comic book haul. Um, starting, I'll also be starting back up my... Uh, comic book collection spotlight series to give me a little bit of a break here and there so I can get caught up on my reading, another part of my uh, New Year's resolutions. So, everyone, have a safe and happy New Year out there. I'll see you all next year. Take it easy. Goodbye.